Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to the studio. You guys have to give me a little grace today because I'm trying something different. Um, trying to make sure I have the connections and everything right. But my goal is just to improve the 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 look of the the YouTube channel, the brand overall. I think the well, coming through most of this year, I've been really focused on getting a new website finished and getting a place for my writing as well because I was with Vocal and then I moved everything to Substack, which I'll show you guys. And then I was thinking about um, my lighting with the uh, podcast, all these different things. And um, yesterday I went and I got another table to sit uh, my keyboard and whatnot on. So I'm kind of in the middle of certain things as far as uh, my setup, where I want my setup to be. I'm going to have to get a custom uh, desk made because I have so much stuff sitting on my sitting on my desk that it's a little bit awkward so I think if I get like an L or a U-shaped desk then that will work better for me um, I was able to uh, set up my light box and I have a couple of umbrellas and so I was thinking about the background, what I want to do with that. Do I want to go with the black or go white? Just different things. And so I'm testing out, testing out different things. But um, ultimately, I feel like I have to have a new approach to certain things, especially towards branding. And so I'm just trying to make improvements and then figure out where I want to settle. Um, but yeah, I would say the best part of my weekend this past weekend was getting back into reading some of my work. That's been uh, a lot of it is years old, but just going over the stories and then adding them to the Substack profile. Um, man, it was it was really enjoyable just doing a lot of reading and editing uh, the work that I have from before, making a few tweaks. Um, even like just grammar changes, things like that. But for the most part, I, I like where everything ended up at. So I'm really happy about that. So I'll show that to you guys. Um, and let me see. Let's see here. All right, there we go. Okay. All right. So I did mention, I guess, the beginning of this year that I was going to switch from vocal to vocal website. I think it's vocal media to Substack because there were certain um, certain stories, especially the Christian stories that I couldn't post on vocal because of their their guidelines. Um, it goes against their guidelines. So. I decided to create a Substack profile and this is this is gonna be where my my written work is especially excuse me I would say like the older pieces uh, older written works that I have um, let's see here yeah so this is going all the way back I was looking through the archives and searching for works that I hadn't really touched in a while. And so just gathering everything, um, short stories, short scripts, flash, flash fiction. Uh, the screenplays I'm not going to post here for obvious reasons, but um, the short scripts definitely... Um, and like I said, the, the short stories. And then if I come up with, um, especially new poetry, I can add some of that on here. But I want to save most of that for the fourth 
yeah, the fourth collection of poetry, but um, articles, any type of open discussion that I usually share um, on YouTube, then I would I would post uh, I would post it here. So, but yeah, just a lot of reading through the stories. Um, I ended up with uh, finishing up yesterday with Call Button. Call Button, the flash fiction is very short, but I feel like. The stories are really good. I think the only thing that I will add here, let me see if I can blow this up, is next to the short story, I'll let you guys know in this area what genre the story is. Because Unfamiliar Foe is fantasy, um, mainly, yeah, mainly fantasy. A Lucifer, of course, would be Christian. Same thing with Bystander. So um, Little Bird is drama um same thing with two birds one stone so depending on if you um prefer not to read christian or you prefer to read drama or suspense or crime uh the the genres will be there and so i have to add that to the subtitle um alongside the short story or short script whatever uh the story is but and then there's a promo for Prison of Despair. Um, she Knew Who I Was is, gosh, that's kind of on the edge of fantasy. So my point being is that my writing is is not, I'm not stuck in one genre. Like Too Cold for me for Meowing, that's how it sounds, is comedy. Um, no Fear is a mixture of comedy in there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to um, put the genres on there and so that'll just help you guys to figure out what you do and don't want to read and then what I also added yesterday is when you just click on the story there's a little blurb at the beginning in italics that lets you know the gist of what the story is so again it helps people um just make a decision if they want to spend their time reading that particular story or not. So hopefully that makes it easy for everyone. Now I settled with, well not settled, but I stopped that call button. I think I have uh, five stories left. I should have pulled it up before I logged on, hold on. But I'm taking everything from the main website okay so unfamiliar foe there's call button so the next stories that I'm gonna add I think I only have two left yeah I've got two left okay the few from 2018 um, and then recall from 2022 those are the only two uh, stories that I have left now from the main website this week I'm going to have to put in links to the Substack page so you guys can just go directly to that specific story but you'll see Substack is here um, just to go directly to the main page or the, the home page for Substack is there, the link is there but for the individual stories that are going to be available on Substack I want to link to them um, from this page so that's really where it is. Oh, and I forgot. All the way at the bottom with X-Men, which was my first really like serious written work. It's 199 pages. So I could break it up. Um into parts like part one, part two, that type of thing. Or I can, maybe I can link to the PDF and share it that way. But I'm probably thinking that I'm just gonna split it, split the 199 pages, like split it into like 20 pages a piece or something like that um, and just release it in parts. But it's a, it's a long story. Um, 
Yeah, it's a long story. So that's going to take a little time. And the only thing about the screenplays, the formatting, I can't, it, I, I have a lot of trouble getting the formatting right when I um, transfer them over to Substack. Just the Substack's formatting is, is kind of uh, awkward. So I'm going to have to figure out how to um, format everything so that it's not confusing for you guys to read. Because the format of a screenplay and the format of a novel is two completely different things. So I think the first, like, how did I, let me see. Okay, two birds, one stone. This is in a screenplay format. So you'll see the fade in. There's your main, um, let me see if I can blow this up. Yeah, there's the fade in, there's your location there. And everything, like the action part of it, the paragraphs as still as it would be on the screenplay. But the dialogue is usually like set in the middle, like centered. You would have the name first and then the dialogue centered underneath it, or the yeah, the dialogue centered underneath it. But on Substack, I haven't figured out how to center the text at all. And the spacing would be clunky. And so what I decided to do was just keep the name of the character name here. Give a short hyphen and then go into their dialogue. And then once you have an action scene or moment between the dialogue there is no capitalization of the name. It's just the action part of it. So that's how I dealt with it with the short, um, the short script. And then there's a number. I think this is what five, maybe six pages. Yeah, it's not very long. And of course, down here at the bottom, you can have uh, or you guys will be able to leave your comments, feedback, critiques, that sort of thing. And on Vocal, it was the same way where people would comment on what they what they uh, on the material. Um, yeah, some comments were good, some were bad, some were on the fence. So it's really all about getting a feel for what people respond to where I can improve what actually works what doesn't work so sharing the work like this really helps me um it just introduces like a, it's another platform for me to introduce um my written work now I can have some uh post on here that go more in depth um with my photography series and collections but I really haven't gotten into that um, just yet. All right. And what's the other thing I've been working on? YouTube page. Okay. And I do appreciate what the three recent new subscribers. Um, thank you everyone for joining in. I think for the most part, people are responding to my shorts um, and I'm getting like maybe 60% of my the new the newer subscribers that way so I'll keep that rolling I mean I'm definitely capturing um, more shorts as I I'm always well not always but I'm out someplace and I'll see something that catches my attention and I'll share it with you guys so you know, on my phone, I'll just capture like 60 seconds worth of uh, footage and I'll, I'll share that and see how you guys respond to it. Um, but, you know, the I will say with the shorts. I think everyone likes the, the contemporary. Uh, the showrooms, the furniture showrooms or anything that I share about interior design home decor things like that now the christmas stuff really didn't take off maybe it's too soon maybe it's not it doesn't look nice enough but like the lows the the paradise gray marble um 
And I think that's going to be my most viewed short to date at 465. Yeah. So, yeah, all of the um, stuff leaning towards the, the high end interior design is getting um, just more attention. So on that note, I wanted to improve the um, the presentation for my work. So yesterday I posted this one which is series dark light wall art for smart TVs. And this is in 4k UHD. So I wish I, I could show you guys my, um, screen, but, um, I, as I probably told you guys before, I upgraded my secondary monitor, excuse me, to um, a Samsung and it's a 4K to match my photo editing monitor, which is also 4K. Um, so I, I mean, I love this setup, right? I love the setup and I was thinking about the branding and I started doing some research on YouTube and apparently there's a lot of, uh, there's a big audience, a large audience for artwork on your television. And so I started doing my research on that, searching other channels. And then there's an interior designer and she had a guide on to, on showing people how to put artwork on their smart TVs. So you would go to your, your smart TV, you would download the YouTube app and then you would go to certain channels that have artwork and they have artwork spe specifically for the 4k monitors. And so I was like, I have plenty of photography, you know, I can definitely do that. Right. So I, I put, um, I put this together over the weekend uh, the dark light series. Let me see if I can, I did make a, a playlist for it. I made a playlist for it. Let me see if I can expand this. And that's really what it is. It's all 11, um, art pieces. And there's, there's already the chapters that are here. And you just blow it up and it takes over the entire screen and you just let it play. And, uh, of course, a lot of people have their, uh, TVs mounted. So instead of having a picture there that you would change out periodically, you would just have you know, your TV there and the artwork will be on it. It covers the entire screen. And uh, like I said, in 4K and it will just show my work. Um, but you would do it through the the app. So I'm really happy with it. I think um, I guess my major concern would be Everyone's TVs are, you know, everyone's TVs different brightness, contrast, color tone, that sort of thing. So I've been very hesitant about having my work, uh, especially as NFTs digitally. But I think through here, the work is still protected. And yeah, it's just a it's just a great way to have people share my work. And it's, you know, of course, it's completely free. Um, so I have landscapes, florals, architecture. I mean, I have so much stuff, but, um, I don't quite know what I'm going to do with the horizontals. Like for this one, I just put it in the corner. Um, yeah, I put this one in the corner. But I think for the most part, 
I'm going to have to think of a different way on how to have the horizontal shown so that they won't look awkward. <laughs> but yeah, this this would be, um, like I said, a great way for me to share my work. And I'm going to show I'm going to go ahead and share this um, with family, friends, stuff like that, uh, because, especially with people who have. I don't, I don't want to say complained, <laughs> but they've told me that some pieces that of my work that they really like, it's um, really expensive. It's out of their budget. So this would be a way for them to um, to have, you know, the work on the wall <laughs> still in some form so I, I think that's pretty cool now the other thing is I would like to add music because one of my websites uh, that I had years ago had the home page was a slideshow and then I had the playlist at the bottom of songs that just you know they played alongside the slideshow and people were commenting would comment back then saying they would just um, keep the website homepage up to listen to the music and see the art. And I kind of went about doing it in a different way um, as far as like linking the work to Pinterest. And then I work with one music artist and she let me use one of her songs, uh, which it was a favorite song of mine. And so borrowed it. Right. Um, and then I linked it to Pinterest and it got a lot of, you know, impressions and likes from there. So, but I didn't, I didn't think to really have that on a television, you know? Um, and then the other thing is, is that with music, it has to be a lot of different, uh, songs or melodies um, and I'm so picky about <laughs> what type of music I, I link to my art or have paired with my art. That's going to take me a while to find the right music that I like because each collection, each series has its own personality. So I have to find the music that matches that personality. And that's not the easiest thing to do, especially if I want something that's royalty free. So, but that's, that's rolling around in my mind. <laughs> that's rolling around. Um, okay. The last thing I want to touch on before I go is I was telling you guys about the logo. When the opening of the podcast of the videos on YouTube I would like the logo to be animated. And so I'm looking at ways to, well, I already have in my mind how I want the animation to look. Now I haven't found anything exactly like that, but this is close. So I'm gonna play this for you guys so you guys can, can see it. I like how this That's close enough. And obviously I think it's, you can plug in your logo in a text and it, that animation style is the same, right? I think that's cool. It's the, okay. So obviously, um, I would have to learn how to do this. Uh, as far as I can see, I would need Adobe Premiere, Creative Cloud. It says no plugin. I don't know, but um, yeah, I I like I like it. I like the white background, especially that angle. That angle right there caught my attention, because if you look at my logo. 
it looks like a maze. So I imagine a person starting here and then they're walking through the maze. And of course, that's not going to be any animation, but that's the viewpoint that I'm looking at. Like I'm I'm starting up here and I'm walking through the maze and then all of a sudden because that'll be like a close up shot, like you're going through a maze. And then as you're going through the maze, the camera would pull back and then you would realize it's the logo and then the text at the bottom would fade in or something like that. Right. Um, so that's the one idea. That's the, that's like the main idea. The other idea that I thought about was having uh, what it would be. One, two, three, four different pieces. So the E would fade in, well, not fade in, but kind of unroll around on its own. And then at the same time, the J would unroll on its own. And then the E would the period here would show up and then the text at the bottom would show. So it's kind of like the, like a reveal of the, of the different uh, elements at the same time, just like a slow reveal. And I think um, I can do that in white or in black, uh, have like a transparent one. And I think that's something simple. I would just have to split up the elements and then have them animate in that way on the same time at the same time to get the timing right uh, and I'm guessing that's Premiere as well because um, I don't think that you can use or create motion graphics in Photoshop CC but that's my idea that's my idea now alternative like i said would definitely be this one because it's um it's close just the angle Preview. yeah that last effect at the end when it finally goes flat Preview. the color i wouldn't do the color oh i like i like that shape Preview. And that when the text at the bottom, it kind of came in with a like a style or design to it. I like that part. But yeah, that's what I found. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, see how the letters, they don't come in at the same time. They're like on an individual layer. Yeah, different opacities. Okay. Yeah, and everything's moving at the same time, but you have the letters being revealed. Yeah, that would be really nice. So. I did go over a video on Canva to see how they approach the animation and I just want something a little bit more complex than what I was saying there. So I'm definitely going to have to go Premiere or some other type of uh, software um, and see what I can what I can come up with. But I'm going to do some digging with this one and see um, what I would have to do to um, get this to work because I really haven't looked into pricing yet I was just looking more into what's the style that I want to to see and like I said this one's pretty pretty close yeah I just noticed the letters at the bottom okay and maybe that color shift on the on the logo, maybe you can go from white to black for for my logo. And then the letters at the bottom can come in the same way. I would definitely change the the font. But I like the idea. Yeah, and then this last frame that would have to be black because the, the off gray or like a it's a darker gray. 
um, not off gray, off black. So I'm thinking like a dark, this darker gray color is a little meh. So I would, I would definitely go with starting out with white and then everything goes to black when it lands. Of course you got that transition right there, but yeah, it's like a chrome or a metal texture and you have the light coming over it. Yeah, and then it would go to black. That would be awesome. Yep, so um, tomorrow I'm going to likely get some rest depending on how I feel because I did a bunch of running around this weekend. And like I said, I kind of uh, customized my <laughs> my table and that I'm using now and I had to get uh, leg leg extensions um, and then I stained the leg extensions to black I stained them a satin black so I had to let that dry and then I had to use the wood glue to make sure that they don't move um, so that's drying as we speak <laughs> as I'm using the table uh, but I, I have more space um, I really do like where everything is. Um, and yeah, ultimately I would say this will do for right now, but I really need to move out of the space that I'm in and have one dedicated room for the studio. Um, and have a larger space, uh, really. And I'm also looking at trends, like looking at how I can realistically transition <laughs> from my day job to working in the studio full time. So I'm trying to pull all these different things together between the writing and the photography, um, whether it's prints or digital, just looking at everything and seeing what I can um, pull together so that I can reach like a certain annual salary where I'll be comfortable at. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's definitely a challenge because I was debating <laughs> debating with it the past uh, two, three months, and I'll go through this before I go. My day job, which I, as I mentioned before, I work for a, five, a Fortune 500 company, which I have never done before. I've been there for 18 months, I wanna say, 18 months. Um, I haven't got a promotion. I have not got a promotion, but I have been getting more projects, more responsibilities, that type of thing. My boss was out for uh, the past two weeks and she left me with her statistics reports and all these other things. Um, and so my Mondays were like crazy packed of stuff, right? Because she, she does a lot of reports. So I'm making sure that the last couple of weeks I've been making sure all her reports get out to the correct departments and then doing my normal job and making sure that goes out to the correct departments or you know places in the company um and so today she says <laughs> we're going back to normal um she pointed out some things i could have done better uh but i would say overall i didn't break anything <laughs> Uh, yeah, overall, it didn't bring anything, but she was like, okay, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff again. And I'm, and I'm like, there's, you don't want me to help you with anything? No. And then she not only does a report, she usually does like the stuff I was doing the last couple of weeks. She starts jumping into my work and pulling stuff. And I'm like, <laughs> 
Wonderful. She's completely re-energized now from being off for two weeks. She's just jumping into everything. And so it's like, how do you tell your boss, like, I need you to go, <laughs> I need you to go over there, do your work. <laughs> Let me do this. Um, but I would say I say that because um, once I didn't have her her reports to do, I went through my reports like that because I realized that the stuff I'm doing is like way easier than the stuff that she does. So. And like her reports are kind of an extension of what I do. It's just more complicated. Same foundational principles, all that, but it's just a lot more. So got done with my reports. And I would say for about half the day, I was bored to tears, like bored. Mind wandering off all this other stuff. And then my boss, she's trying to get other people to teach me how to do things, but they don't have the patience to teach someone else who's not their assistant how to do stuff. And so they're just giving me like the boring stuff like here. We don't have time or feel like doing this. So I'm getting all these little things. And so, yeah, I'm like getting bored out of my mind um, at my at my cubicle. And I did share with you guys the. Um, my boss wants me to work from home. Um, her boss, <laughs> though, that's over her, wants, wants me to work from home, but the IT department is dragging their feet. So they are supposed to give me a laptop, which I didn't get um, or haven't gotten yet. And they put the request in on August 5th. And what, today's the 19th? So yeah. Um, and then I got a message from them last week saying that the laptop they wanted to give me, it crashed or broke down or something wrong with it happened. Something wrong happened. So I um, haven't gotten it yet. I'm not going to bug IT about it anymore. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't gotten a promotion. They haven't hired me uh officially <laughs> to the company even though there's you know my boss is talking about that and then the person over her is talking about that um but i'm i'm a contractor and i think i'm fine with being a contractor uh i do want to work a couple of days um of the week from home but i think on my floor I'm the only person that works in office all week on my side of the floor of what the second floor. So everyone else has two, three days in office and then two, three days at home, you know, depending on how they want to juggle their schedule. But um, so, yeah, so I I don't have to be in the office um, and technically I don't have a department because the position I applied for. I didn't get and um, I don't know they kind of added this position on for my boss I guess they made it up I don't know but um, I, uh, she's had a few assistants before they didn't stay and so I don't I think that's why they didn't make a department for her but she's under special projects so anything under special projects I am learning from her um she's been with the company over 20 years i think like up there so like i said she can sometimes give me a whole bunch of stuff uh, to learn at one time but then it's like i continue to learn learn it learn it like practice 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 um until I was comfortable with what I was doing. And then she was like, okay, I'm going to Italy and wherever else she was going. <laughs> like she's off. So, um, um, yeah, I, I think that I'm going to take the lessons that I've learned from the job. Um, and I think her being gone the past couple of weeks helped me to realize how much I can do uh, on my own because it was like 
again, I haven't worked for a Fortune 500 company before. It's a lot of numbers, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of notes that I'm taking. Um, but I felt like if I can cover for her for two weeks, <laughs> my confidence is like whoosh. You know what I mean? Uh, my confidence is way up there. So I'm much more comfortable now in my role. And like I said, now that I'm back to my normal every day, what I usually do without doing some of her work, I'm getting bored and she knows I'm getting bored. Um, because the thing is, is that, like I said, she's had assistance before. And when she would give them things, not saying that I'm, that I understand everything, but I'm catching on to it. I think it's implied like better than her other assistants or previous assistants. So, and I'm noticing that I'm catching on to things. And then while she was gone, I had other departments contacting me, asking me questions. Um, there's so many people, <laughs> not all, not all of them are in, in the state, in the state I'm in. They're all over overseas throughout the U S continent. They're spread out. And so, I've gotten much more comfortable with working with just people I don't know. Um, whereas when I first got on this job, I was, I don't want to say terrified, but I was like edge of panic. Oh my gosh, this is a lot. Cause like I said, I applied for an entry level position and that's not what this is. <laughs> So I had to learn the software. I had to learn the language, like the terminology they use. It was just a lot at one time, but I need to work. So I was like, I'm going to stick it out and just grind and just keep practicing, practicing, practicing until I get it. And then the next thing I know, December last year, my boss went on vacation for like three weeks because she wanted to go back to uh, her homeland and see her mom or family. Um, and like I said, she just came off another two week vacation last week. Um, and I've like, I, again, my confidence is just in a much better place now. And so I feel like God really put me here to build my confidence up. Um, to a healthy level and then I mean now I just have the confidence to say okay I want to do something else right um which I've had these talks with my boss already um even months before she went on vacation just I want to do so <laughs> I want to do something else I want to do more stuff um and as, I, and as I've been showing you guys with the um the motion graphics, the stuff with my writing, the stuff with my photography. It's like I i need things like this to keep my mind occupied. Otherwise, I just get like <laughs> I start drifting off, can't stay focused. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I feel like purpose is very important to my life. I find purpose in my fine art photography. I find purpose in my creative writing. Um, and in everything that I learn, um, as far as whether it's motion graphics or whatever, it's all geared toward fulfilling my purpose, you know, of getting my work out there, um, building the brand, all of that. So, um, there's a lot of my coworkers who are really content or just excited about climbing the corporate ladder. And like I said, being in that atmosphere for over 18 months now, I'm just not that type of person or I'm not competitive in that way to want to, you know, climb the ladder and, you know, get employee of the month and things like that. It's like, I come to work, I do my job and, you know, I feel, you know, I, I want to do well at everything that I do, 
But in terms of purpose, I just don't get anything out of it, you know, Um, and I need to I need to get purpose out of my career. I need purpose from that. And if it doesn't have if I don't feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose through my work, then I'm really not motivated (laughs) you know i'm really not motivated to to stick with that type of work so that's the other thing that i saw because years ago i mean i've been working with my studio since 2012 july 2012 and after five years I would say around 2016, 2017, people start telling you, hey, it's not (laughs) it's not going to work. You're going to have to get a real job, that type of thing, Um, which I which I tried uh, quite a few times to get what they call a real job. And I just wasn't in my happy place or in in my space where I it was like something was always off. And then you fast forward to today, I understand what that is, is that I I didn't find purpose in what I was doing. So I was moving from one job, one position to the other, and I was like not understanding what's not right. Because a lot of times you run into people and they'll say, okay, as long as you're making this amount of money, why are you worried about purpose? (laughs) You know, the purpose is to make, you know, six figures, five, six figures a year, whatever it is. Right. Um, That's that's the goal. That's the purpose. And I just don't it's not that I don't want to make six figures. What am I doing to make the six figures? And if I don't feel purpose in what I'm doing to make the six figures, then I'm going to look for a way to do that to fulfill my purpose and make the amount of income that I would like to make. Um, So that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. And it's been um, really isolating. I don't really really want to say lonely, but you get isolated. You know, you get isolated because it takes hours to learn, to hone your craft, to practice, to put the work in. And then you have to go into getting all the work out there, the marketing, the branding, learning new software. Um, and like I like I've probably alluded to before. I already know, like by the time the end of this year rolls around I'll be looking into how to improve my creating new photographs photography improving my style um, trying something I don't want to say drastically different but different um, compared to the work I already have and it just it takes time it takes a lot of discipline and there is really no you know, your name's not in lights and stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's just that, you know, I, I get off work. I, I come home. I try to lock in the best that I can um, and just keep going. But I think, um, again, more importantly than anything else, my confidence has just improved so much. And I think that also was missing Um, because I grew up just listening to people kind of say things, you know, put me down, certain things like that, especially going through, you know, middle school, a little bit of high school. And I end up carrying a bunch of stuff with me that I shouldn't have carried with me into adulthood as, as far as mentality, mindset. Um, and I realized that even well into my forties, I'm still learning how to turn those voices off 
you know, and move forward. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just um, just a mindset, a different, different mindset for sure. And so I, I spent, especially last week, just thinking about how I want everything to look as far as personal life, studio, specifically the brand, how I want to, you know, go into marketing that more effectively. So it's just researching the best I can, um, looking at what works for others and seeing if I can implement some of the principles into my own life, my own business. Um, but like I said, the thing that really was the best part of this past weekend was reading my work, um, editing the work, editing the stories, um, remembering that I really like storytelling. And so, and it was easy. It was, it was, uh, a, a, a piece, you know, a feeling of peace about it that I don't even think I get with my photography. Um, and so that's something that I want to dig into a little more, um, <laughs> to just to see if I'm reading my emotions correctly. Um, but yeah, it was just a piece about it that I was like, yeah, this is something that I would like to do more. So, um, I could not get my, uh, software to work final draft. Um, couldn't get it to work because what last year I made the switch from PC to Apple. So trying to get some of the, the software that I bought previously to work, it's not working. So, um, so I'm going to leave off on this note. If you guys are looking at screenwriting, I've only taken one semester, so I'm not, you know, a master of the of screenwriting, but I think um let me show you guys this. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up first in terms of software. Now I was using version eight, which I can't get to unlock now on my cause I updated my my PC laptop as well. And that's what I was trying to open this on and I couldn't get this thing to open. Um, so I'm going to have to repurchase the software, um, unless I can figure out how to get the previous version to work, but I had version eight. They are on version. What's this? 13, a final draft. But Final Draft is, is great. It's a great piece of software. Um, I have all of my screenplays in Final Draft. It's just really... Once you learn, like, shortcut keys and things like that, like, it's, you know... I like it. I do. And it looks like they've added a bunch of fancy stuff to it. Um... I could upgrade, but I can't find my product key code either. So I'm just going to have to probably start from scratch and get the, um, the Apple or the Mac and the Mac version of, of the software. I missed the sale that it was on. Let's see. Did I miss the sale? Okay, I did miss a sale. Okay, so two weeks ago, it was $75 off. Um, and then that particular sale ended last week, I think. Um, now it is $50 off. Um, but that's, that's what it is. Apple, Windows, it's not available for Chromebook. So... Yeah, definitely recommend it. I do have the the book. 
it's not the final draft book, but it's the Hollywood standard, which it really helps me to format um, correctly in final draft. So. Gosh, I don't know if I can pull that up for you guys. It's probably on Amazon, if I can spell correctly. Oh, wow. They came out with another one? Yes, they did. 2021. Okay, let me show this to you guys, and then I'll go. Okay, so the Hollywood Standard, if I can get this over. Now, I have the second edition. This is the one that I have, and it has helped me a ton because if you're, if you submit a script to producer, director, script reader and your formatting is off or terrible your script is going to go into the garbage more times than not unless you know that person personally but more times than not they look at your formatting to just judge on if they're going to read the script or not especially the script readers because they're like the gatekeepers um so this is the one that i have and again it's not very expensive at all the paperback is 20 dollars, and then there's the kindle which i don't like kindle because i want to feel the book in my hand do the highlighting put little notes on the side that type thing um kindle is good i guess you know if you're on the go but i'm usually yeah i usually like using the book but anyway i did not know they made another one. The Complete and Authoritative Guide to Script Format and Style, third edition from Christopher Riley. So, yeah. It's um it's more like a reference, reference guide. It it reads like a reference guide. So it's not like he's giving you a, like a bunch of opinions. He's just telling you this is the correct format. If you have a phone conversation, that's a format. If you have a, um, a montage, there's a format for that. Voiceover, there's a format for that. So <laughs> writing is complicated, but making sure you format everything correctly is also even more complicated. Um, it just it just takes a while to learn, but I would definitely recommend getting the Hollywood standard if you want to write um, screenplays. And like I said before, these are the times that. I don't know, like I should be married because I would have my wife read so much stuff. <laughs> I would have my wife or my girlfriend read like so much stuff. Um, and when I was when I was, what was it? 20? Yeah, this was years ago. But anyway, this is before my nieces were in college or graduated from college. My nieces were around. So I would give them stuff, especially my oldest niece. She reads through stuff so fast. It's like ridiculous. She reminds me of my sister, but they read through stuff incredibly, incredibly fast. And they just give me like, feedback like okay this worked this didn't work this is what I liked about the story or one time my niece said the main character is crazy I don't know what's wrong with her she's got all these problems <laughs> it's very humorous but they they would be my script readers right so um they both moved out of state they're not even far away from each other right <laughs> They're my two nieces. They are they are like this. Uh, but yeah, they both moved out of state. So um, I don't really 
mess with them bothering them like because my youngest niece uh i think she's wrapping up college and the oldest she's married now so i i i don't i don't uh disrupt um their personal time their personal lives stuff like that um my nephews i never did ask them to read things like that um video games we would do that together reading not so much um and then my youngest nephew he is in the military uh i'm told that he's you know in the states he's back in the states so i'm happy about that um but yeah i i'm saying all that because again that reminded me that i want to just work in the studio um full time leave my day job work in the studio and I don't know the past three weeks I've been catching up with family which my family is all over the place they're everywhere um but I'm catching up with them um catching up with my grandmother who I haven't seen and I don't know how long uh so there's just a lot of um not overseas traveling but some traveling that I would like to do just have the time to do uh the freedom to do and i think working in studio full time i would be able to do that not only of course see see uh family but um work with different brands um and possibly have some of my work in showrooms um the artwork in showrooms so again i'm putting my list together of possible brands that I can work with and um, see what happens <laughs> see what happens but thank you guys for tuning in I really appreciate it and um, I'll continue to just continue uh, you know striving to improve um, on everything really across the board on everything so everyone uh, take care and I'll see you next time